Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Um, sorry that I kept you all waiting. My own fault. Um, but um, I'm Park Chang. I'm the chair of the Voter Systems Advisory Committee, and I'm, I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, I guess our first agenda item is the approval of the minutes from the August 6th meeting. Um, there is one error, uh, which is that John Avlon, sitting here to my left, is listed as both present and not present. Physically not present. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you see him, now you hear him. And, and based upon where he's reporting from, sometimes you think that's absolutely possible. <laughs> possible. But um, he was present. Yes. So with that, amend, with that change um, direction, I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve these minutes. Here. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Terrific. And we also need to approve the minutes from the June 11th meeting. We have a motion to approve. Motion. So, second? Okay. All in favor? Okay, terrific. Um, um, I'm going to wait for um, the report of the chair until the beginning of the hearing. Um, I have um, some written testimony that I will read from. And uh, um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to um, Amy Lopress, the uh, Executive Director of the Campaign Finance Board. I also will keep uh, my comments brief. Um, I just wanted to report that the Campaign Finance Board, after being uh, uh, out of our real office because of Hurricane Sandy, um, have, are located now in temporary offices at 250 Broadway. You can still mail us at our old address, 40 Rector Street. Can, all our email addresses remain the same, um, but the phone number has changed, and so uh, it's on our website, but uh, you can call us if you need to at 306-4566. Um, I want to commend um, our many staff members who worked helping the Board of Elections uh, get ready for the election after the hurricane, um, both before the election day and on election day, doing various tasks to assist the Board of Elections when we were unable to get to our own offices. Um, I wanted to thank the Board of Elections for lending us uh, some tables and chairs for our temporary space that our staff is now sitting at. Um, and I just wanted to report that you know, we conducted the campaign finance program for the special election that was held on November 6th for Council District 12. We made payments in that uh, election both before and after the storm. So I want to, it was a big effort um, for the staff to make those payments after the storm. Um, and then I also finally want to thank New York Institute of Technology for lending us this lovely space tonight. Um, now Anita's going to give a brief report. Good evening, everyone. Yes, we're happy to have you all here. <laughs> I'll try not to be too loud with this, uh, but what, I am I am very happy that we're having this annual hearing, and I do understand that we've had some very hard situations in the last couple of weeks um, dealing with Hurricane Sandy, but I'm happy to see that as New Yorkers, as usual, we come out, we stay very committed to what we believe in, so I'm happy that we're here to have this conversation and discussion and to ultimately hear from you. So I'd like to just talk a little bit about um, some of the efforts of the Voter Assistance Unit um, over this past year. And clearly what we wanted to do, and our chair will talk more about our uh, technology and, our, and, and his vision for us with, where that's concerned, but I wanted to talk some about the social aspects of that we put into voting and registering voters and the innovations required to stimulate greater participation and interest using government agencies, partnerships with public and private institutions, as well as members of the community who were our partners. Our programs and messages were developed in part from a study on who votes that was commissioned throughout uh, with NYU Wagner School and the New York City Campaign Finance Board and the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee. And in that, we found that the areas that needed the most assistance were in, the, in Brooklyn, Bronx, and the Queens that had the lowest voter turnout throughout the five boroughs. And we concentrated on these areas 
in creating our programs and um, making sure that our voter awareness partners were in those areas. Our goal was to create and develop programming that would keep New Yorkers engaged and excited and we conducted voter registration trainings, programs, events, partnerships, um, and created a, an all-around campaign focused on women, youth, government, health, corporate, community education, and in uh, faith-based um, sectors as well. Uh, throughout the year, one of our key partnerships that I really wanted to say is with the Board of Elections. I'm sorry they're not here at this moment, but we hope that they will join us soon. Uh, and that was to conduct demonstrations of the new machine. So that was still a huge part of what we were doing because New Yorkers, for the first, for the most part, were voting on new machines for the first time. And we wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity to demonstrate that. Um, after Hurricane Sandy's devastation, we partnered with the Board of Elections to make sure that they had the help that was required for closed poll sites due to the devastation. And also we helped with administrative functions as it relates to absentee ballot mailings, poll worker outreach, as such. Uh, we kicked off the year in March with our New York City, with a partnership with the New York City Commission on Women's Issues, uh, which was called Your Vote Counts. It was a multimedia campaign encouraging women to vote. And that campaign was launched by Mayor Michael R. Bloomberg. Um, we went on to hold throughout the year public service announcements. So we created a public service announcement that was shown on WNBC. And it was um, shown in high rotation during prime time um, and on the weekends as well. It was shown on the taxis throughout New York City. We also had surveys uh, in the taxis as well to try to capture experiences of New Yorkers their voting experiences and also to remind them when the election days were coming up. Uh, as we entered the summer, we did a pilot program with a street team to go out into those areas that were identified and to create the partnerships that were needed. So this we go in with the machine demonstrations and also do voter registration drives. Uh, all in all, we had over 62 partners coming out of the summer. And as we went into the um, final days of voter registration deadlines, we entered a challenge of having 1,000 uh, voter registration drives. So we had over 100 groups that signed on to assist us with that. Uh, and we were very pleased with that because it went anywhere from, from the banking industry with J.P. Morgan Chase and Popular Community Bank to very local groups as well helping do those as well, the League of Women Voters, and, and it goes on and on. Um, we had, in, what we kicked off uh, was a youth voter registration jam and that was with Hot 97 and with Voto Latino and we had actress Rosario Dawson join us and was the headliner for that event. We had it at Lehman uh, College in the Bronx and it was well attended and the goal of it really was to encourage our youth to register to vote, to participate in it, and to know that other people think that voting is important. And so we try to stay on that message. Um, coming out of that, we worked with the Health and Hospitals Corporation and uh, we also worked with the Barclay Center and as you know the Barclay Center was opening for the first time so we were really excited to be a part of their team and we went out into the community together working to do voter registration drives with them. So now as we continue to go into this election season and into the new one we were very excited to launch our, what we're in our fourth year of doing is our Youth Poet Laureate Program. And with our YPL program held on November 9th, we received a new Poet Laureate. And we're so very happy that we have two of them here with us this, this, this evening. We have um, the Ishmael uh, Islam, who served as a Youth Poet Laureate for 2012, and we have the new Youth Poet Laureate, Ashley August. Uh, so, Amy, I'm not sure at what point you wanted to bring them up. Okay, yep. So, do you want to introduce them? 
<laughs> Can you guys please join us? So Ashley's going to join us first. Ashley, why don't you step over here? I'm going to give you my microphone, and if you could just tell a little bit about yourself and then perform your winning poem. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Ashley August. Um, I'm 19 years old. I'm from East Flatbush, Brooklyn. Um, I'm very, very excited to be New York City's 2013 Poet Laureate. Um, it's crazy. I'm still in shock because all of the few, uh, Poet Laureates that came before me, I look up to them, especially Ish here. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I can't wait to get started and to get into it and to really get grinding. And um, yeah, I just really, really am excited. Um, I, can, I feel like this is such a beautiful platform for young people to really get into voting because it's a thing that we don't think we have a voice in. You know, we don't we don't think that it really matters or it really affects us when it totally does because everything that happens before us is you know it's gonna flow right into us when we get to an older age. But okay, so I think I'm gonna do my poem now. I don't know if I need this. Can you hear me? We are a generation of larks. We'll stand online for hours for concert tickets. We'll wait out online all night for $900 sneakers that will go out of style in two weeks. We will stand online for a brand new phone that does the same exact thing our current one does. But you see, I think our lines are getting all crossed and confused, y'all. We are sending the wrong, 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 wrong messages. Our country is crying out for us to stand on the line to help make things better. You see, we are one of the richest countries in the world, but we still have people starving on our own blocks. Our programs in city schools are being yanked out by the easel. Violence is still on the rise all throughout this country. There aren't enough cops where they need to be. Chi-Town, Chicago is now known as Chirac right now. Us young people, we're chilling. We don't think that this voting thing has much to do with us. We don't think that it directly affects us when it's totally wrong. That's just what they want us to think. Did you know that a certain presidential candidate wants to get rid of all of our financial aid and you're over there standing on that line for those brand new Jordans when Michael won't help you pay your tuition? Our generation's vote is stronger today than it has ever been. If we do not vote, we do not have a right to complain. Thank you. Yeah. And now we will hear from our 2012 Youth Poet Laureate Ishmael Islam. Hello everybody. Uh, can you just Give another round of applause for our current youth Laureate. Uh, good evening, Chairman Chang, Executive Director La Presse, Voter Assistance Director Anita, and VAAC members. Um, it's my pleasure to come here before you tonight to share my experiences with you as 2012 Youth Poet Laureate. Uh, during my tenure, a lot of really uh, really important things. I, I was involved in a lot of important things uh, and was very humbled by the experience overall. Um, just to list off some of the things I was involved with, um, well, aside from voting in my first presidential election, which was a really cool way to culminate the experiences overall, um, had the pleasure of performing my own voting poem throughout the year at various spots around the city and with other city youth at schools to share with them the importance about voting. I interned at NYC Votes during the summer and learned a lot more about the electoral process and 
how voters' voice shapes our democracy. Um, I participated in voter registration drives, and it was really, I felt really, um, it was just a really cool thing to have people register, or to, to actually register new voters, um, especially with information, knowing the information that NYC, we were coming up from a very low standpoint as far as voter participation. So it felt good to kind of boost those numbers a bit. Um, I represented NYC Votes in LA uh, back in April for the first ever Voto Latino Power Summit and had the opportunity to uh, meet with several other youth leaders from other states. And um, good thing, our city, NYC, won the contest for best voter registration action plan. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of good work. Um, honored by Brooklyn Borough President Marty Markowitz and performed at his State of the Borough address. And, um, oh, and another, I guess another important thing, I published my first collection of poems, as you all are yet, <laughs> entitled Meet at Green. But I would like to say, in culmination of all those things that, I, that I've done, with my tenure as youth poet laureate and just being humbled by those things. The most important part of my experience was getting a better understanding of my city and um, just this program that Anita and the uh, Voter Commission has blessed me with. Um, I was able to just travel around the city a lot more than I already was and it really showed me the importance of how I can be involved as a youth. Um, beyond just taking the train every day. And it it speaks to, for me, it spoke to the larger point about voting and just that bigger picture of how voting really pushes you to be civically engaged. It's beyond, because I mean, after the election, we pick our candidates and we move on with our lives, but it really just shows us how to be active as citizens. And I think that is the most important thing about voting. And just this entire experience, it made me a more active citizen and to have that at this age um, is really great and made me feel that I can that I have a tangible way of being involved with my community and I thank you all for providing me the opportunity and passing the torch to Ashley August I hope you will grant her these same and even greater opportunities as well thank you kindly Always great to see uh, folks from Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn in the house, right? right. All right. Um, but I think this, 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 uh, what Anita statement and 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 uh, the words from the poets also, I think, bring out one of the most wonderful things about what the Campaign Finance Board and the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee is doing by put, bringing putting a face on the effort to bring voting, the importance of voting, home to people. And um, you know, I think it's invaluable, and I want to, I want to commend um, Onita and Cheyenne Sapp, uh, wherever she is, um, and all your, and your staff are really doing such an amazing job doing that. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Um, and also, but along those lines, um, you know, all the effort that these folks put out as individuals um, is very small in a city of over eight million people. And um, we've talked about, since I became chair of this committee, the importance of technology and being, being able to reach more people and scale those voices. Um, along the lines of, of something that we've done, or we've helped to do, uh, I'd like to invite the VoteScope team up to show what they've done. Um, and uh, this is something which is actually, I've been talking about for a while, but these young folks have actually brought to fruition um, it's basically figuring out how to connect some basic data sets that we have into something which becomes, um, takes data and information, and turns it into a user experience that, that can ultimately lead to more engagement. Um, what they have is basically, and, and I'll, I'll explain it, so I won't, I won't actually blow the, blow the punchline. Um, but they've created something in a very few days um, using, as volunteers, um, stimulated by something that NYU Woods Wagner School put together called Code of Change, Code for Change, a hackathon. Um, and this team, I'm very proud to say, was the second prize winner in that hackathon. 
um, this app, which was deployed um, a couple weeks before the election, actually had a few thousand um, users and helped people find um, polling places and, and do some other things. But with this, I'd like to introduce um, actually two of the developers. And Renee, why are you back there? Why don't you come up here? Um, Nathan Story and um, Renee Yap and Maria Rabinovich, who um, together formed this cohesive team that came together, they never met before, and over the course of two weeks worked tirelessly in every single free moment they had to build this app, and since they released it, they've actually continued to develop it. I'm not leaving, I'm just going to move so you can see it. Yeah. Is there a way to lower the lights? Great, thanks. Yeah, just... Thanks, Sarah. And also, uh, Valentina, who couldn't be here with us tonight, also is the, the fourth member of our team. Um, we're really happy to be here to um, share our experience of helping to build a tool for people to get voting information. And we're really excited about the possibility for tools like this to uh, increase um, voter turnout and um, civic engagement beyond uh, voting. So we wanted to show you a video of how our application works. If you have a smartphone with you, if you haven't tried this out already, you can uh, go to votescope.us and play along. Um, you can enter your address and this was built for the November 6th election um, for New York City, so it was to give you information of um, where your polling place is, but in addition to that, to give you information, some basic information about the candidates who are running um, and um, how you can find out more information from their websites or their social media, how, who they're funded by, um, and this was a, a prototype, so we have a lot more ideas of how we can expand this application. Um, we just updated it to start indicating some of the winners of the, the recent elections. Um, we don't have the official results from Board of Election yet, so we will be um, adding those in for all of the addresses once we get the uh, official results. But uh, on the demo here, we can show, um, you know, if you're clicking on uh, President, you can see, you know, Barack Obama was the winner. <laughs> I mean, you may know that, but the, the point of this application was that while there is a lot of information for presidential or uh, statewide races, there's not a lot of information available for uh, citywide races, and that's a that's a, a crucial piece of information that's missing. And we think that um, making uh, tools that are very user friendly can um, help to educate voters about local races in ways that, um, you know, haven't been done as much as they should be. Um, so, I don't know, Maria, if you want to share a couple? Uh, one thing that I would like to add is we did have a few thousand visitors and we had an incredibly high conversion rate and we had an average um, user time of two minutes and 46 seconds, which is super long for websites. It's really good news. And it was really encouraging, and we definitely, there's a lot of tools that emerged similar to this right before the election, um, but this was kind of an encouraging uh, data set, so if you guys have any ideas about how we can move this forward, we are looking for some. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll just... Add that please uh, get in touch with us. Our, our team is still here to um, work on this for the 2013 election, but we are looking for, um, you know, we, we've been uh, uh, really privileged to have a partner with the New York City Campaign Finance Board, but we are looking to kind of develop further some more institutional partners, other groups that are doing stuff like this um, so that we can. Uh, you know, really build this out fully for the for the 2013 uh, election. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, great. So, so the name, so I want to also thank uh, Jeff Merritt and John Alblon who stayed on my back to make sure that we had something built, um, and for uh, Council Member Brewer there who is always an inspiration when it comes to technology and engagement. 
Um, but just to kind of bring the narrative back home, I mean, the idea that you can take something as simple as finding your polling place, being able to see who's on the ballot, being able to collect information about each and every candidate, potentially tying it all back to campaign finance board information about their election, about their, 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 their campaign finance, and then being able to find out, subscribe to find out who won, and then being able to message your, your, your elected officials afterwards. These are such simple things, but there's such a, 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 a narrative flow that kind of goes from before an election to after an election, that technology can really help to kind of seamlessly unify. So guys, I just want to say thanks again. It's a total volunteer effort. Um, wonderful job. Very proud to be associated with you. Yeah. So with that, there's no further business. Okay, terrific. So we may have a motion to adjourn this meeting. Well, then begin the next stage. Sure. Okay. Um,